What's going on guys? My name's Corey Kamori and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown channel. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Servants by Zeal and Ardor. Released in 2018 off of the Stranger Fruit album, Zeal and Ardor's Servants is a song that touches upon revolution. Uh, really rebellion as a whole. And it's a song that is a call to arms essentially for those that have been put down to take control of their destiny. So we begin the song with the words. Mama gonna cry, gonna steal their horse. So we're gonna join a man in the hearse. Papa gonna die, gonna steal their horse. So we gonna set fire to the woods. No grace, say the beast's own name. Left hand up by the end of the day. Many gonna die when the sun don't shine. When the servants have their way. Servants, join us. To give some context with Zeal and Ardor, they're a band that really is just made up of one individual. Uh, the gentleman's name is Manuel. And he uh, basically created this whole band, this whole sound, out of an interaction he had online. He was on 4chan, and basically he asked somebody, or just anybody, to throw out two genres of music, and he was going to try to combine those two to make a song. And when this interaction occurred, uh, the two things that were thrown out there was essentially slave spiritual music and black metal. And he took those ideas there and he created the first release for Zeal and Arter, which I believe is called Devil is Fine. And I really enjoyed this release. It's kind of an album, kind of an EP. Um, and overall, I thought it was a really interesting listen, though at times it did have a lot of production value issues. I thought that the production on it was very spotty on some songs, but then with other songs, it really added to the character of those songs and made it feel more authentic to what it was trying to do. Again, really combining those two really different genres of spirituals and black metal and really making it sound like something that would have occurred during the period that they were trying to discuss. Fast forward a few years, and then we have the release of Stranger Fruit, which takes that idea, those concepts, and expands upon them even more. You can tell they definitely had more production at their disposal, and they had more money to spend when creating these songs. And I think it comes together a lot better. Uh, it's more cohesive, and I feel like it goes to some really interesting creative places. So with this song in particular, and all of the songs that Zeal and Arter really has in their catalog, this idea that is trying to be brought across is, what if... The American slaves, instead of absorbing Christianity that was basically forced upon them, instead went down a darker path, went down a path that was very similar to what the Norwegians went down, and really went down towards occultism, uh, which, as most people who listen to metal know, a lot of that rebellion against Christianity really brought forth the uh, Norwegian black metal movement in the early 90s, and uh you know, again, the idea here is to be like, well, what if these people decide to take on these ideas and concepts instead of the ones they were being force fed? And I think it's really, really interesting because it it lends itself to the imagery that I think a lot of metal people enjoy. It adds to a lot of the character that is really present in these songs from the spiritual side of things, because you really can't say you've ever heard anything like this when you listen to a Zeal and Ardor album. You have the elements of blues, you know, spiritual music, gospel music. Then you have elements of black metal, death metal, and it really fits very well together in a way that you would automatically assume is not possible. But when you listen to these albums, I assure you it is possible and it sounds awesome. So with this song in particular, I think it's really just expanding on that idea of what if the slaves of the Americas decided to embrace occultism, Satanism, and basically reclaim their rights and fight their oppressors that way. You know, and it's a really interesting concept and idea, and in this song in particular, it gets expanded upon in a way that sounds really energizing and darkly empowering. So what I'm deciphering from this first line here or this first verse here is, you know, the whole mama gonna cry, gonna steal their horse. Uh, so we're gonna join the man in a hearse. Papa gonna die, gonna steal their horse. So we're gonna set fire to the woods. This is the seed of rebellion. This is, you know, those who have been oppressed have decided, it's a handful of people have decided enough is enough. We're taking back control. We're gonna push against our oppressors. We're going to kill our masters. 
And it's an interesting idea, and it's one that has been present in music before. Uh, artists like uh, Run the Jewels, in particular Killer Mike, has really coined the term kill your masters. Um, and I think it's something that a lot of people can identify with to a certain degree because we tend to identify with the underdog of stories. And a lot of times we root for these people to basically, yes, fight against the uh, powers that be that are really you know, controlling you and trying to hurt you and dictate your destiny and, you know, rise up and take power and control for yourself and, and, to, and create a better outcome for yourself. You know, I think it's an idea and concept that is universal and mixed with that, you know, you have the whole element of metal in general that adds this element of empowerment to this music. Now it's also quite dark and at times quite violent but I don't think that violence is necessarily supposed to be literal. I think it's supposed to be more implied. So in summary, this section again is the beginnings of this revolution and it's a call to arms for those who have been uh, oppressed to rise up and join this cause to fight for their rights and for their freedom. We then move on through the song to the words, blood gonna flow, gonna steal their horse. So we're making our way to the hills. God don't know gonna steal their horse, so we're all gonna take our fate. No grace, say the beast's own name, left hand up by the end of the day. Many gonna die when the sun don't shine, when the servants have their way. Servants, join us. This section right here, I think, is just an extension of that first section, and it's really just showcasing the whole process that is occurring here of amassing this army of people to fight the powers that be. I don't really feel like it gets really too convoluted here. It really just seems like an extension of that first section where it's saying our numbers are growing and our influence is gonna start growing. So you better join us, you better get out of the way. So what is really interesting too, I think that this song touches upon, and this is something that I did a little more research in when talking about the whole left hand up by the end of the day thing, because I was like, what, what the hell does that mean? Well, I did some research, and what I discovered was this idea of the left hand path. Left handed path practitioners embrace the dark as well as the light in order to invoke the alchemical formula solve et coagula, which means dissolve and preserve. It's the idea of confronting the negative in order to transmute it into desirable qualities. For left-handed path practitioners, they descend towards union with the divine to obtain godhood status with godlike powers of their own. I mention all of that because I think that it is applicable to this section of the song where it says left hand up by the end of the day, many going to die when the sun doesn't shine, when the servants have their way. Again, it's saying that, you know, out of all of this darkness and oppression, we've decided that we are not going to linger in it. We're going to take control of our own destinies. We are going to be the new masters. Another thing I wanted to mention was this quote I found from Killer Mike uh, from Run the Jewels. And he really has kind of coined the modern equivalent of, you know, kill your masters. He actually has a brand of shirt that says kill your masters. And he has this interesting quote here uh, of what that idea really is. He says, quote, the term kill your master is derived from something Sifu Terrence Walker told me. There was an Eastern saying that if you should be walking a road and meet your master, you should kill them. Most people hear that and take it in the literal sense. If someone literally tries to enslave you, yes, you should kill them. But the saying means that you have to kill the things that try to master or control you and your life. You can't thrive off of the injustice around you and expect justice. You have to kill your wants, your need for approval, and your ego. We could kill war if we killed these things. I mentioned that quote because I think it is applicable to this song and all the things that it is discussing. Another thing that should be mentioned is that Manuel himself said, yes, this song can be taken as a song about revolution and slaves rebelling against their masters, but it's also a message to the middle class. And when I dove deeper into the lyrics, especially this section I'm gonna talk about right now, I really understood what he was talking about. Now listen here, you can join us or you can die in the fire. No way that you're coinless. This is the end of the line, when the servants have their way. This section of, now listen here, you can join us or you can die in the fire. Again, I think it's pretty literal. It's saying to another group of people that 
don't get in our way. You can join us, but if you don't, then you're gonna be collateral damage to this revolution here. And I think that this section is the section that Manuel is talking about when it comes to the middle class. Uh, right now, again, it's no secret that we have a handful of people at the very top controlling and influencing a lot of things in our society and uh, really have unlimited power and control when it comes to the economy, when it comes to politics, you name it. And we have a lot of people that have slipped into poverty, have stayed in poverty for a long time, especially since the last economic crash. And then we have the middle class and the middle class is shrinking and things are getting worse and worse for the middle class, you know, every day, essentially. And I think that this song is really talking about that. It's saying that the enslaved, or let's say the people that are impoverished, have decided enough is enough. We need to reform this system. We need to change things so that they can benefit everybody and not just the super rich. They're saying to the middle class, those in the middle, look, join us because literally you guys are one bad uh, car accident, health concern away from being in the throes of poverty just like we are right now. And you know that things need to change. So you can join us, but if you don't, sorry, we're completely reforming this system. We're changing everything about it. And you may be collateral damage amongst that process. So, and I, I don't necessarily think that it's saying that, you know, people from poverty or those who are enslaved are going to just rise up and kill everybody, literally kill everybody. I think it's more talking about killing the idea that only a select few of people should have all the resources in the world and have the ability to amass that much money. And this idea that we need to figure out ways that implement capitalism, maybe elements of socialism and stuff like that to benefit everybody, have the ability for everyone to actually thrive in this uh, nation of ours, or you could even talk about just the world as a whole. So again, I don't necessarily think that this stuff is supposed to be taken literally. I think it's supposed to be more interpretive, but I really think that the imagery it creates is interesting. It's definitely something that I've never heard before in metal music. And I really like that Zeal and Ardor is not afraid to get a little weird with what their music is trying to accomplish. And they really have a flavor and style all their own, which you know, I really have to applaud them for because it's really made me love metal again because I, for a while, was like, well, metal is just seems like it's doing the same thing over and over and over again. And then here comes a band like this that proves that you no know, metal as a genre is so versatile. It can really be anything. And that's why there's so many subgenres of it. You know, it really can have a flavor all its own. I think the Zeal and Ardor has really rejuvenated metal as a whole. But those are my thoughts. What do you guys think? Do you have anything else to add to this discussion? If you do, please comment below. Let me know. As always, I've been Corey Kamori. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.